the fact that its head is so close to me right now is just sending chills up my spine. We've just entered the reptile house. Look, <laughs> look at Josh all excited. <laughs> now that is the ultimate in chill. You've got a very interesting face. <laughs> We've just arrived here at um, Cotswold Wildlife Park and all I can hear in the distance <laughs> are Siaman Gibbons. <laughs> this is what I remember from a trip from to Marwell years and years ago. It was all I could hear while I was there was Siaman Gibbons and this is all you could hear all day. <laughs> well the only people you'll ever meet will buy a pair of sunglasses with another pair of sunglasses on her head. These ones are new, these ones are old. And I've yeah. got a little case. She just can't quite let go of the old ones though, so she's going to wear them both at the same time. No, I'm not. I'm taking the other ones off. <laughs> <laughs> Did they give you a little pouch? Yeah. yeah, they gave me a little pouch in my um, pocket. But yeah, we'll uh, show you what they got here. So what? Black and white colourless monkeys, uh, grooming each other. They're important for their social structure, they're very social animals. Oh no, I don't know what he's doing, he's dreaming or being very silly. <laughs> and uh, this one here, dangling his tail like Xavier does at home. <laughs> so if those gibbons in the background will actually allow me the time to talk to you, there's a burrow there. You'd think there'd be a mammal in there, but no. It's a burrowing owl. They excavate little burrows by themselves. They're awesome creatures. Uh, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's a tawny frog mouth in here. Absolute master of camouflage by the looks of it. Look at that. So amazing. And then this had just spent several minutes trying to find it and it couldn't see it. <laughs> Jesus, we're getting closer to them gibbons, you can tell. Simon gibbons, they have a little pouch they can inflate just beneath their chin, which is what gives them their loud resonating calls. And the thing that you can basically hear, if they're all on a calling spree, then you can hear them from any end of this park. It is, yeah, crazy loud and at times it's quite annoying. <laughs> so these have got to be two of some of the cutest owls you've ever seen. Northern white-faced owls. They come from around the Sahara area in, the, in Africa and uh, yeah, have the distinction of kind of being one of the most adorable owls I've ever seen. So gorgeous. Okay, so this is a much larger enclosure and uh, well, it's difficult to appreciate just how big vultures can get until you see them up close. I mean, that is absolutely enormous. Wow. Such magnificent creatures, ultimate scavengers. I don't know if you can just about see it in there, but that is a vermiculated eagle owl. So majestic. Just get the feeling that it's above everything <laughs> and not just lose you know, just None of our problems seem to matter. <laughs> Wolverines. I hope we managed to see them. They're fantastic. Believe it or not, they're actually in the same family as stoats and weasels. Just the largest member by a long way. And this is a bird I've always wanted to see. They've got funny noises, the Eurasian spoonbill. <laughs> Oh, 
like stalk them. Look at that beard. Humboldt penguins. It's just out of feed, so it smells lovely and uh, fishy around there. <laughs> few nesting up in there as well, apparently a few of them have got eggs. So you've got a couple of the wild one, wily ones over there that realise they don't have to put in all the effort to get the food, they can just wait there and get fed straight from the hand. <laughs> Perfectly adapted to swimming. Interestingly, they can also drink salt water. They excrete the salt out of the little glands. You can't ever go to a zoo of any kind without seeing absolutely gorgeous meerkats. Look at them. They've always got a sentry on the lookout. Because <laughs> they obviously don't know they're in captivity. And, uh, oh, they're on the way over. Where are you all going? Tidying up the burrows. Gotta love their little faces. These guys also take down venomous snakes in the wild. Good on you, you're all doing a fantastic job. It's a collection of eggs, so you can see the sizes. So everything down to the Fisher's Lovebird and Diamond Dove, all the way up to the ostrich. Now, some comparisons just just how large that egg is. That is crazy. Largest egg in the animal kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Just for comparison, that's an ostrich egg. And that's a more or less crocodile egg. Crazy. Camera really doesn't do them justice, they're so striking. So we've been here about half hour, 40 minutes so far. I think it's exceeded our expectations. <laughs> Anyone ever wonders what a prairie dog looks like? <laughs> I think these might be one of the most adorable creatures I've ever seen. Not too, not too good if you're fond of your garden not being full of holes though. Reminds me of the dramatic chipmunk vine that was going on around. I mean, if love of any kind exists in the animal kingdom, I'm pretty sure that's quite close to it. So beautiful. My Asian short claw waters just chilling. Catching some early morning rays. Well, not quite so early morning now, but they're catching some rays. Here we have the kookaburra. It's probably not going to give us its famous call today, but these things are actually known for taking down venomous snakes. Can I help you, sir? You look a semi shaved chicken. <laughs> You've got a very untrusting face. <laughs> Look at that bluish neck. I like the hair. It's funny. It's tropical in here, all right. <laughs> Lovely and humid. I feel like it would be like if I sat in Yennefer's enclosure. <laughs> I've not seen such tassels around one's neck since I've watched the last Wild West film. Like the most exotic pigeon I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. How amazing some of these birds are. Well, if you could just about make it out in there. 
but in there is a very beautiful two-toed slot. That is got the right idea. Just chill. Oh hello! Didn't even see this. Guy's wearing goggles. <laughs> Well, I was right, it is a pigeon, a Nicobar pigeon. <laughs> there you go. You're the noisy one, aren't you? That's what we've always managed to hear since uh, we've come in here, is you lot. <laughs> There's the other sloth. They're on the back wall. That's another two toed sloth. This place is amazing, I love little ecosystems like this that people have built. Got all of your quests. Difficult to see, but look at the beaks and eyes on these guys. Green Arakari. So these are pink pigeons. So uh, they look almost like our pigeons, but they look like they're all sunburned. Laughing thrush. Apparently they're found in Mauritius. Be sure to tell my auntie if she got married there. <laughs> now that is the ultimate in chill. Check it out. That's a six-banded armadillo, armadillo actually, which if I remember rightly, I think that's the same as Brillo the armadillo. The um, Brian Barchock's one in America, so I'm going to have to confirm that for me. But <sighs> I've never seen a more chilled animal in my life. It may be March. It may be a little bit colder than when people usually enjoy this, but there is no bad time to enjoy an ice cream. Mm. I, I don't know what take, it's filming at all. Take a look. See, everything is as it should be. <laughs> That's the snowy owl. So beautiful. Oh yes, you spread your wings, you show off, please. Beautiful creatures. I've always been fascinated by owls. I've never seen a more surprised looking owl. Hello, you two, yes. I think it might be feeding time. Well, making some noise. Great grey owl, enjoy your meal. Damn it. This would have been a perfect way to burn some of the ice cream calories off. <sighs> Discrimination against adults. So what's in here? Ooh, hello. Look at this. <gasps> There's the tailless whip scorpion in there. Where are you? Where are you? It's my favourite invertebrate. Where are you? There it is. Look at that. Tailless whip scorpion. Completely harmless. Kept as pets quite often. Look like the stuff of nightmares. They're the insects you see in um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. But actually really good pets, believe it or not. They look like, this, again, they look like the stuff of nightmares, but in reality, they wouldn't be able to do anything to you. Incredible looking things. Love them. So, in here, we have what appear to be a pile of leaves, but look closer. And you'll see, not all of the leaves are created equally. This is a giant Malaysian leaf insect. And there are even some right in front of us, right here, right there. How nature adapts these things, it's just crazy. Ooh, people with a, an aversion to cockroaches, look away now. <laughs> this is a death's head cockroach. Look at these things. 
like most people would be creeped out, but I can't help but admire them. They're some of the toughest, toughest creatures on the planet. Known for their ability to be, eat basically anything. And for something that is even slightly edible by a creature, they will eat it. This is something you don't see too often, a Fiji banded iguana. Oh wow, beautiful. If I remember rightly, in America, they can't have these full stop outside of a zoo. They're uh, endangered species, if I remember rightly. I think it's a absolute wow. national treasure. And I can see why, even though this one's obviously in shed. Just look at how beautiful that is. Yellow around the nostrils. Those wonderfully adapted claws, adapted to climb, and that tail that is. I'm going to guess that's prehensile because that is extremely long. <laughs> Cartoonishly long almost. And you are being such, such a good poser at the moment for the camera. Thank you very much. As much as I'm sure they'd try, I'm not sure Zia and Siri, the uh, leopard geckos, and not sure they'd be able to overpower one of these. Huge. I mean, look at the size of that of that locust. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> look at these. Huge, aren't they? The jungle nymph again. Look Soft a bit, nightmare. a bit, no, yeah, a bit nightmarish. But <laughs> the fact that they can stick to this glass like this, they're adapted little pads on their feet. That's crazy, especially look at the size of them. Beautiful, and there's a whole bunch of them all around there. They look like mutated, overgrown crickets or something. <laughs> they're just crazy. And something here that's I'm pretty sure just about to appear in Melissa's nightmares. <laughs> This is a salmon pink toed bird eating tarantula found in Brazil. They overpower any large insects, even been able to take small vertebrates on occasion. They are very powerful tarantulas. Assassin bugs. Yeah, another venomous bug, something you would not want to take a bite from. They actually eat each other as well, they are cannibals, they can even take down insects larger than themselves. Emperor scorpion, world's largest scorpion. They get a lot bigger than that. It goes with a scorpion. The bigger the pincers, the um, less venomous it is. So emperor scorpion sting is actually not much worse than a bee sting. This is an interesting area. They've got a Mexican red knee tarantula, and that is possibly one of the most beautiful tarantulas I have ever seen. I love the little contrasts, the colours on them. Beautiful. And in here, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen the, the episode on uh, Jimmy Fallon, where Robert Irwin brought a few of these in. <laughs> so there's a tricolored squirrel. They've got an ear piercing shriek that they use as a warning uh, for alerting other squirrels of danger. Beautiful, found in Southern Asia. And very chill by the looks of it. Either that or I've just caught them at a part of the day where they're chill. I'm not sure you'll be able to see in here, but in here is a binturong. It's a, it's a bear cat that, believe it or not, smells of popcorn. <laughs> I can't get close enough to tell you that it smells of popcorn, but I'll take their word for it. We've just entered the reptile house. Look, <laughs> look at Josh all excited. <laughs> Eyelash viper, feeded lizard, one of the only venomous lizards on that planet. Got glands on their bottom jaws, very, very oh, powerful venom. Where's the eyelash viper? You can't see it. Right. There you are. Pit viper from Central and South America. One of the most beautiful vipers ever, and he's he or she is rather. Helpfully hiding for me. <laughs> so you can see why they're called the beaded lizard. Actually covered in beads all over their body. Scientific name is Heloderma horridum. Look at this one wrapped around the bottom of the tree. 
Over here we've got a Jamaican boa. Loads of animals at the moment, apparently appear to be in shed. <laughs> Yogi, I found one of your Jamaican cousins. What have we got? What else have we got? <gasps> Kaboom Viper! Where are you? <gasps> yeah, there it is! There it is! There it is! I found it. I found it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see its body now. The unmistakable rectangles behind there. God, I wish this camera had more zoom. But that there is a Gaboon Viper. That is a very small one. They get much, much bigger than that. Big enough to take down rabbits in the wild, believe it or not. And uh, the longest fangs of any venomous snake. So over here, we've got frilled dragons. Looking as awesome as always. Pretty sure that's what the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park was. Oh my God, look at that Huge. Was uh, inspired by. And little Gigi skinks. Look, look a little armored skink. Oh, that is an absolutely amazing green tree python, Morelia viridis. I literally saw one of these in a reptile shop the other day, but I don't, uh, I don't get the pleasure of seeing them in an environment like this quite so much. They just look incredible. It'll be asleep at this time of day, but still, look at the muscles on the back of that head. There, I would not want to take a bite from one of them. They've got big teeth and they're not afraid to use them. So in here we've got a Chinese crocodile lizard. <laughs> Just about to get a shot of him over there. Come on camera, focus where I want you to. Semi-aquatic lizard found in China and Vietnam. And it is currently eyeballing me. Oh, and here we are, the daddy of all rattlesnakes. Daddy. The, East, the Eastern Diamondback. And that is a relatively small one. They get much, much larger than this. The largest pit viper found in North America. <sighs> They're so incredible. Black tree monitors. Very arboreal and I've seen some actually in Southampton Reptile, they're some of the most friendly black tree monsters you'd ever see. Look at their little whippy tails. So in Southampton Reptile they actually keep them and in there they've got a big enclosure with a water feature and they are known for constantly climbing up there, blocking the water feature and they have to keep coming out for maintenance because they keep knackering it. Spectacled Cobra, otherwise known as the Indian Cobra. Naya Naya. And that is the quintessential cobra. Right there. So beautiful. And completely asleep right now. Spiny tailed iguanas. Look at them eyes. You don't look like a normal iguana. You look way too alert. Most of them just have. Them. There you go. You're so tabby. Such a beautiful lizard. Found only on Utila Island. So then here we've got the Henkel's leaf tailed gecko. See if you can spot it. Masters of camouflage. What I need to just get across to you if I can find it is look at the eyes of this thing. They've got incredible looking eyes. Almost like little looking like little universes. Here is the beautiful pit viper. Now you have an absolutely massive head and a very thin neck. Right. Found in Thailand, which considering where some of my family hang out, I should probably let them know about this. <laughs> and here, something I really want in my collection one day, the rhinoceros rat snake. Crazy. Look at them scales. Just chilling. Look 
looking amazing, sir. I will have one of you in my collection one day. That's one way to tell you're an arboreal snake. <laughs> Perfectly at home, even on what's basically a rock face. So in there, you've got the world's smallest crocodilian, the Cuvier's dwarf caiman. Now, small does not necessarily mean nice. They are still crocodilians and they still have an attitude. But this is the smallest of them all. There's another one hiding under there, I can just see the tail. Uh, although they're small at the moment, they still get fairly large. You're talking between four to five feet long still. Most reptiles can't send you to the hospital with one bite. They still definitely could, even on that size. Of, even at that size, if they get hold of a hand or a finger. Lepitopsis. Look how tiny you are. It's a hard life being a tortoise. Something that Clint from Clint's Reptiles will be so pleased to see. Emerald tree skinks. According to him, these are the best pet lizards you can possibly own. Just looking at them, I can't disagree. Obviously I'm in a zoo so I can't really interact with them, but I'll have to one day. They look like an absolute blast. And that one's doing his best Spider-Man impression, just climbing straight up the brick wall. There's something I don't see often. Bradle's python, or Bradle's python. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Someone <laughs> to correct me. It's a member of the Morelia family, so it's related to carpet pythons and green tree pythons, and you can see why. It looks perfectly at home up in there in the trees. And I can't really see the face too well, but they're all characterized by that sort of almost bulldog looking face, full of teeth and full of pits. Looking absolutely amazing. Look at what a beast you are. Yakari Cayman. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, but I'll put a little uh, put a little caption up so you can see the name of it, but look at that. That's a rhino iguana. Complete vegetarian, actually. But just oh. every one of these creatures just takes my breath away. Really, it does. But over here, one of my favourite animals of all time: green anaconda, and it's right up against the glass. Huge one. Now, the enclosure. Is actually quite large. I don't know if you can see in there. It looks like they're doing a water change at the moment, but this here, I mean, that anaconda is. Oh. It's, it's just, the fact that its head is so close to me right now is just sending chills up my spine, genuinely. The green anaconda is one of my favourite animals of all time. The fact that I'm this close to one, it's just, it's just amazing, it really is. Especially one this size, I mean, don't get me, they get much, bit, much bigger than this, but I mean, that thing, the width of that thing's body is th fatter than my thigh, and I am not a, I am not a small individual. <laughs> look at that. See the eyes right at the front of the head, perfectly adapted to just peeking out the water. And these things are explosive. If you if you were to get grabbed and coiled by one of these, there's not a whole lot you could do about it. They're disproportionately strong for their size, and they are huge. Just incredible. Look at that fruit bats. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Oh, there's actually two of them in there. 
I'm gonna guess that's probably a male and a female. The female is definitely gonna be that big, large one there. I don't see males often get that big. And the male one all the way over there. Oh, that is absolutely huge. And this is why you have to do regular water changes on an anaconda enclosure. <laughs> Yeah, that is, oh god, it's just crazy. If there's one animal that I was looking forward to seeing here more than all the others, it was the green anaconda. Now for any idiots out there that think still that snakes don't have bones, this is the skeleton of an Indian python. Um, snakes have got the most ribs out of any animal on the planet. Soft and dry. Beautiful creatures. Yeah, one of them was only too happy to eat grass out of my hand, the other one not so much. <laughs> oh, hi. You're actually doing it this lot. Uh, yeah, not something I'd necessarily want to be butted by. I mean, these might be very small goats, but them horns are no joke. So. I don't think I'd do very well in a headbutting contest. See, I'm quite lucky in the way that I can separate myself from free feeding frozen thawed rodents to uh, snakes. I don't think I could ever feed live. But, um, yeah, I can't help but find these absolutely adorable. Though. Such wonderful little creatures, and I love the. Uh, <laughs> Makeshift hides and whatever they've got is brilliant. I can see why they'd have to change them all quite frequently. We've owned rodents in the past, and I can tell you now, all of this stuff does not last long. Believe it or not, I do get asked regularly what's the difference between a mouse and a rat. Uh, size is the main thing, if I'm honest. They get several times larger. Look at the size of them compared to these tiddly things. <laughs> Yeah. Rats are also, in general, a lot more intelligent and more interactive and make brilliant pets. It's just a shame they don't live all that long. So, Melissa picks some grass. As soon as it hears that she's picking grass, they swarm her. <laughs> Especially interested. How'd you feel, Melissa? It's quite interesting, isn't it? Hello! <laughs> Hello! Yeah, just be careful with them horns near your face. Yeah. Well, we've had an absolute blast of a time here, haven't we? We yeah, have, it's been nice, yeah, it's been yeah. really good. Uh, absolutely knackered from all the walking now. I'm not very built for long distance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been about four hours. Yeah, about four or five hours of walking, and that's been plenty for me, thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. The weather's been nice though, really good. Yeah, it's been brilliant, the weather has. First time I've been walking around in a t-shirt for however long. Oh, yeah. Not that anyone really wants to see that, but still. As long as you don't take it off. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'll be sure to put all this footage together into a nice video and uh, show it to you all soon. Thank you very much for coming along with me. And obviously, Melissa, who's always happy to see everyone, aren't you? Yeah. And as happy as she is to film me at times, although I've been doing most of the filming today, she's just been gawping at the animals, which is understandable, they're incredible. And she got new sunglasses, as did I. White sunglasses, which suit everyone. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They definitely do not. They do. Nothing wrong with white sunglasses, they are very telling of a man who is confident, even though I'm not particularly confident, but yeah. I'll leave it there. Bye-bye. Look at how beautiful that emerald tree skin is. 
such a cheeky little face. It's a problem when I go to a place with reptiles like this, all I'm doing is going, well that's going to be in my collection one day, that's going to be in my collection one day, and this here is definitely something that I think needs to be in my collection one day, that's so crazy. <laughs>